Hey there, this video is all about the Christmas presents I've made this year. First of all the stars that you've just seen and second the Christmas present I've made for my girlfriend. It's this map of Middle Earth that I've made out of cherry. All this is mainly made with the CNC machine so it's all about this topic. But first of all we'll start with the workflow in Fusion and then get to the CNC machine. I like to give self-made presents. So every year I think of a present I can produce in series to be able to handle the number of presents I need. Thanks to the CNC this year each present is customized even if it's made in series. For each design I started out with this template I created first out of a simple 2D sketch extruded with a hole in it. I then insert the SVG file of the sketch I want to engrave on the star. I have to select the plane and then drag it onto the star. Sometimes it appears somewhere else so you have to scroll a little bit out to find it. If you don't have your image as an SVG file that's no problem. You can easily convert it with for example this website. Just drag and drop your file to the screen field and set the color to monochrome. If the converted file has too many or too less details, you can easily set this number. The lower the number, the more details you get, but the bigger the file will be. And if the file gets too big, it will be hard to work with in Fusion. I link this website for you in the description. But back to Fusion. Now it's a matter of setting the right toolpath. I had already all the toolpaths and their settings in the template, so I just had to change the chains. I started with the engraving and then I did the chamfering so I could do both of this with the same end mill. With the second end mill the hole and the contour of the star will be cut out. Now we have a look at the simulation and over there with the chamfering toolpath is a mistake. So we will have a look at this. And it's just this little red arrow. It's on the wrong side, by clicking onto it it flips to the other side. So now everything is correct. To be able to mill all the stars at once, I just had to copy them all in one file and make one setup. With this we can run the CNC. And finally it's just a matter of putting the end mill in, setting all the zero points and fire up the CNC. When the CNC has done its job, to finish the stars, they just need a little bit of paint and sanding. Now that all the stars are done, we will have a look at the process of making the map of Middle Earth. I started out with this picture of the map. With this picture imported into Fusion, I had an orientation to model the sea, the hills and the lakes. With a plane in the form mode, I could use the grid to model the landscape. I started out with a pretty wide grid and inserted more and more lines where the area of the landscape is more detailed. It's easy to pull the lines or points of the grid into any direction to model the mountains of the map. In the model environment, I then could use this plane to slice a bigger block in half. The lower part of it then will be the model of the board I'm looking for. But the inscriptions of the map are still missing. I wanted to do these like the engravings on the stars. This is the first try of the 2SVG converted picture of the map. The file is way too big to work with in Fusion and still lost some details that are important, for example some small letters. But it contains a huge number of lines that are completely unnecessary. So to simplify the picture and make it easier for the converter to get to the result I want, I edited it in GIMP first. I changed the picture to black and white and cleared out everything I didn't want to engrave. This is the SVG that came out of the converter, nothing's missing. For Fusion the file was still pretty big, but I hoped for the best. 
Because this isn't a plain surface, I couldn't use the engraving toolpath. Here I had to use the 3D projection toolpath, which is really amazing. It projects the selected chains onto the surface of the workpiece and by setting the offset in the set axis, you can set the depth of cut. A big pain is that you have to select every single chain manually and these are a few thousand chains. So that took some time. I told you already that the SVG file mustn't be too big. That's definitely true. In this case I sometimes had a waiting time of a few hours while the computer was calculating. So if you do that, make sure your file isn't too big. At the CNC I started with a 10mm end mill that removed the most of the material in three passes. You've seen that already. Then I switched over to a 6mm ball nose end mill and the last step, the engraving, made an engraving tool with 30 degree tip angle. During the third pass with the first end mill, I realized that the wood bends up towards the sides. At first I wanted to leave the wood like it is. Where it's bent up, the router removed already more material. If I had bent it down in the next pass, the router probably wouldn't have material to remove as the surface is too low. So for example, the engraving would be missing. But it kept bending up more and more, so the material the bow nose end mill had to remove was too much. So unfortunately, in the end, I had to bend it down. This is where this little edge that you can see in the middle of the map comes from. I've bent it down with these black tapes. The whole milling process took about 12 hours. When the CNC was ready, it was already Christmas Day morning, so I had to hurry a little bit to get this finished. The original plan was to get some black paint into the engravings and sand it like I've done it with the stars. But I really love the textural finish of the 6mm ball nose end mill. So I decided to sand the edges and just give it a coat of oil. As I couldn't wipe off the excess oil in the tight engravings, I used compressed air to blow it out. This worked surprisingly well. So that's it. Thanks for watching and a happy new year. See you there.